What's good everyone, it's CJ Beats. We're back at it again today. Today I'm gonna to show you five ways to improve your sample making. Let's get into it. All right, so I just opened up uh, my DAW here, Logic Pro X 10.6, and we're gonna discuss the first way to improve your sample making, and that is by using some stereo field uh, tools such as imaging uh, to widen your samples and really utilize the entire spectrum of the stereo field to make your samples nice and wide and uh, essentially leaving room uh, for the producer that'll be using your samples to add the drums. And the drums, you know, carry the beat, obviously, uh, and they're primarily in the middle. So I'm trying to make my samples wider so this way the, uh, the producer, you know, can easily add their drums in there and the sample doesn't interfere with it that much. So let's have a listen to the first 16 bars here. This is a sample uh, that I recently made uh, which I put into one of my sample packs called At The Movies Volume 1. If you're interested, you could have a listen to it and download it for free actually at Frequency.com. I'll put a link in the description as well as in the cards right here. Let's have a listen to the first 16 bars here of this sample and then I'll uh, get into the tools that I used to make it nice and wide. Okay, so let's talk about panning your instruments to really, you know, bring that depth and that width into your uh, into your mix. And uh, as you can see here, I have four uh, that I'll solo out right here, four tracks. As you can see, I pan them left and right, and uh, you know, really pushing out uh, anything from the middle uh, to the sides so that I can leave that room in the middle. That is that is my goal: is to leave a lot of room in the middle uh, for the producer to add the drums. So always make sure that when you're adding instruments, you don't have everything like straight in the middle. You can have some stuff in the middle, but not everything. You gotta, you gotta be able to use your panning right and uh, move your instruments left and right. And really be experimental with that. You know, try to find the best place to put that, um, that specific sound. Because if you layer sounds on top of each other and they're all straight in a line in the middle, you know, it'll be hard to tell or hard to hear them individually and then panning those instruments left and right really allows those individual sounds to you know, be accentuated. Another tool that I use here, and I actually put this on the stereo, this is basically, this, the stereo track is where all of those individual tracks get fed into, and uh, I use this tool called Ozone 9 um, Imager. Ozone 9 Imager is an imaging tool that enhances the stereo field. So there are great little tools within this uh, plugin uh, that allow you to be a little, a little more granular when it comes to what frequency sets you want to widen or which frequency sets you don't want to widen and perhaps even make more mono. So for me, I, I always live by this. You know, I always make sure that my, my bass sounds uh, as much as possible are, are in the middle. I cut this frequency spectrum, you know, from, from the lows, from the low mids to the mids, uh, from the mids to the high mids to the highs into four different sections. And then the tool here, the stereo width tool, allows me to push stuff um, more mono or more into the stereo field. So, and you can do it by band again. Band one, as you can see here, I actually have mono. If we solo out this particular band, um, what I did was, this was what it sounded like initially. And I made it more mono by pushing it down here. I'm going into the negative uh, zone with that band. We could solo out the next one. Let's unsolo that. These are the um, low mids to mids. I push those more further out in the stereo field. The polar sample down below is a great way to, you know, really see if, if that specific band of frequencies is being pushed out left and right. Since we soloed this out, what I can do here is just, uh, let's go ahead and go into the negative with this. If I push this all the way down, you could see that it's more in the middle, right? There's there's nothing really happening left and right. So I chose like, you know, to push it up to about 40, 40.5. Then we'll go to the next set of frequencies here, about a 1.1K to 5.9K. I spread those out even further. And there's not much happening here from the 6K to, uh, 
20k range, uh, but I soloed that out uh, as well. So if anything is in that stereo field here, band four, I pushed out even further. So again, Ozone 9 Imager is a, is a really great way to, you know, push certain frequency sets into the stereo field or in the mono field. Down here you have uh, another tool, it's called Stereo Eyes, and uh, I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right, Stereo Eyes, and I'm using it in mode two. There's two different modes. I'm not really sure what the two different modes are. You could probably look that up, but um, I just go by ear, you know, mostly, and uh, I, chose, um, I chose mode two for this. And then I use the, uh, the milliseconds meter here to push it out even further. So if I play this without the stereo eyes on, and I'll unsolo this, I'll turn it on so you hear the difference here. You can tell it, it you know, it, it just makes, it makes your dynamics even more, uh, you know, spread out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's an awesome tool uh, to get that width that you're looking for in your mixes. Okay, so I opened up another project to show you the second way you can improve your sample making, and that is uh, using syncopation in your melodies. A lot of the times when I'm listening to samples, you know, I, I'm always looking for a unique rhythm within the melody uh, that really makes it stand out. Um, you know, if you if you have a, a melody that is, uh, you know, quite repetitive and always just hitting on the one, uh, you know, it can get very boring uh, after a while. So you always want to try to find a unique rhythmic pattern inside of your melody so that sample really stands out, you know. A beat maker want to, you know, actually use the sample. So let me play you uh, eight bars of this sample really quick so that you can hear what I mean. So you can tell that the rhythmic flow of this melody makes it, you know, sound unique. And the way that I come up with, you know, unique rhythmic flows for my melodies is uh, number one, I got to figure out which notes I can use for the scale. And then, you know, just shifting your MIDI notes left and right, and then trying triplets as well as uh, regular eighth notes or quarter notes or whatever it might be to find that pattern that, you know, that makes it sound unique. So instead of like having a melody that sounds like this, which really doesn't have any, you know, rhythmic element to it. Try to make your notes, you know, syncopate more so that there, there is flow, there is rhythm inside of them as well. The flow and rhythm doesn't have to only come from the drums, but sometimes the melody actually drives the, the rhythm of a beat. So the third way that you can improve your sample making is making sure that you're mixing your samples correctly. Um, time and time again, I come across samples that aren't mixed well, and uh, you know, one sound is drowning out another sound, and you can't really hear what's going on, and it just, you know, makes you want to go on to the next sample. So there's a lot of tools that you could use to mix your samples well. Number one is leveling. So as you can see here, all of the tracks inside of the sample have different volume levels. And the reason being is because I want certain items to be, you know, tucked in further in the back and, and certain items to be further in the front. And you have to just experiment to see what sounds right or what sounds best and, uh, you know, come up with your own formula uh, for that specific sample. There's no one set of rules for leveling. You know, it really depends on what you want the sample to sound like. So you have to have a vision first and foremost, and uh, you know try to use the tools that you have at, at, at your disposal uh, to make that vision come to life. So for example, the bass, um, you know, is, is a pretty loud bass already. So I compensated for that by bringing the volume down. Uh, this other instrument, this other instrument was kind of quiet. So I actually tried to accentuate it by bringing the volume up. Um, and I also used an EQ and EQs are great ways to mix because I can separate frequencies, uh, you know, from each other and, uh, enhance certain frequencies, tuck away other frequencies. Uh, so here I'm really accentuating the high end without this. Uh, I'll let you hear it really quick. It's kind of all over the place, but this really sort of brightens up this, uh, that particular instrument. And if you have them all together, you know, all of the instruments combined, uh, you know, using the leveling and EQing, uh, you know, makes them blend well together. So uh, mix your samples well, use leveling, use EQing. 
you could look into the, uh, those specific topics to get better at them. Uh, leveling and EQing uh, to mix your samples well is a really integral part to make a, uh, you know, a, a good sample. Okay, the fourth item on the list to make your samples better is adding stuff that no one else has. Okay, I've, you know, we're, we're all uh, a culprit of this where we're using the, the same virtual instruments, uh, you know, uh, to make our samples with. It's always a great idea to add something else uh, to a sample that no one else has. Let's have a quick pop quiz. What is the only instrument that you have that no one else has? I'll give you three seconds to answer. It's your voice, right? No one else has your voice and you can use your voice in your samples to really make them stand out. I like adding vocal elements uh, to my samples or my beats, um, you know, using my own voice. So I'll record something using an auto-tune. I can't really sing for shit, but an auto-tune helps there. And uh, I'll let you hear the first 16 bars of the sample here. You know, it includes instruments that I use, but I also uh, recorded a vocal on top of it and then used different tools to manipulate the vo uh, that vocal. Okay, so let me solo out this portion here. This is the vocal that I recorded. And uh, I'll leave, I'll basically take off all of the um, effects that I had put on it. So you can see there, I didn't really say anything. I was just, you know, mumbling. For me, it was more about adding a, uh, you know, a unique melody on top of that uh, that chord structure that I already had. And then I started, you know, manipulating my voice some more. Uh, the first thing I did was an EQ here. And basically, you know, using I, what I like to call like sort of a, a, a telephone effect. <laughs> So I'm, you know, really cutting out the lows, um, a lot of the highs, all of the highs, uh, and some of the, uh, you know, high mids, and just having, uh, you know, anything from 200 to about 600, 700 uh, peek through. The next thing I did was uh, add a add a plugin called um, Little Alter Boy, so that I could pitch my uh, vocal up by 12 semitones. Next thing I added on top of that was um, the Endless Smile by Data Life. This is one of my favorite, favorite um, plugins to add, uh, you know, uh, reverb. It's actually not a reverb. Uh, one time I mentioned that in one of my tutorials that, oh, this is the best reverb uh, ever. And somebody was like, yeah, this is not a reverb. Uh, but it works like a reverb. It, it adds, uh, you know, a lot of depth to uh, whatever you put it on. So I'll let you hear that. The next thing I added, I actually uh, had a halftime in there, but I didn't like it. So the next thing I added was, you guessed it, the Ozone Imager. So I basically, you know, spread that vocal out left and right to make it nice and wide. And lastly, I added an Echo Boy, which is uh, just a delay. It's a straight tape delay uh, in a quarter note, just to give the vocal a little more bounce. Okay, so the fifth item that I wanted to talk to you guys about was simplicity. Simplicity is key, man. I mean, um, so many times, again, I you know I come across, I'm listening to samples all the time uh, that get sent to me, and uh, you know that that I hear in people's beats, and uh, you know a lot of the times, like too much it doesn't sound good. You always want to try to minimize the amount of sounds that you're using, but just make sure that they work well together, blend well together. That being said, you know if you have a, a, a sample that uh, you know utilizes i don't know 15 instruments or something like that start subtracting some of those instruments and see if leaving that space 
really, you know, enhances that sample. Uh, so I can't stress that enough, man. Simplicity is key nowadays. Nowadays, especially, don't overdo your samples. Don't put too many elements in them. And, uh, you know, if you're going to uh, start getting into the business of making samples, uh, producers love, love, love to have, uh, you know, stems. So as you can see here, you know, this is the, the full sample in the, in the front here. And in the back, I basically have all the individual uh, instruments in, uh, in, in their own sections. So this way, when I bounce out this entire sample, the producer can go in there and cut those pieces out and then, you know, mix and match as they, as, as they please. Um, you know, and, and especially when, when like a verse drops or something like that, you want to take out a lot of the elements and just have one of the elements of the, um, the sample in there. Stems are really important, uh, to get that accomplished. So now I've shown you five different ways to improve your sample making. I hope you enjoyed the content today. I hope you learned something most importantly. And if you have any questions, whatever it might be, put those in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you're notified anytime I upload some new content. My name is CJ Beats, and I'm out. Peace!